Good evening, everyone. You know, I was testing my system earlier today, and I forgot to change the settings to public. And I was uh, teaching, started the teaching of a lesson for tonight, and <laughs> to my surprise, it just dawned on me that I wasn't, I wasn't uh, public. I was on only me. Boy, I tell you, the devil show is busy. Try to distract us and keep us from doing what God wants to do for other people to hear the word of God. And, and, and you know, but you know one thing about it, when we recognize our mistakes, we need to admit it and move on forward with it anyway. So tonight I, I read the uh, daily devotion from the book, More of You, God. And I do apologize for uh, just now coming on public. I was on at six o'clock tonight. But as I, I mentioned, you know, for some reason I had my settings wrong and I was on only me instead of public. So, but I, I just w want you to be blessed tonight. Stay encouraged, stay excited about you to keep praying for me because I'm still learning this stuff as I go. And sometimes things does become frustrating, frustrating and challenging. But, you know, God is exalted. Jesus is Lord and the devil is defeated no matter what he does or try to do to us. We are more than conquerors. So tonight's devotion, thank you, Father, today. I thank you for this beautiful life you have given me. You make a way for me each and every day. Lord, you give me more abundant life. My life is fulfilled because you are the center of my life. Jesus, because of you, I have a blessed life, and it's more than I could ever imagine. My life is exceedingly overflowing with your goodness and your grace. Because of you, Father, I glow with the light of the Holy Spirit who resides inside of me. Lord, I am overwhelmed and I have so much gratitude for you because you love me so much. With you, Lord Jesus, I have peace, joy, and comfort, love, and a purpose. Lord, as I go through this beautiful day you have made, let me share these precious gifts you have bestowed upon me. I'm grateful. I'm grateful. <clears throat> I have the best life now, living with having more of you, God. Amen. That is so beautiful. It's a devotional, en enriching word to remind us that we have a fulfilled life in God, that he's the center of our hearts. Everything we need is in him. He's overflowing. He's the goodness and the grace in our lives. And that we can live our best life knowing that God is on our side. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Praise God. Praise God. Tonight's lesson, it's a <clears throat> enlightening lesson. And it's power packed. It's full of information and revelation. And I really believe that God is going to give you a revelation and this word is going to be able to convict, change, and prove you to become better in the life you live for the Lord. Even recognize if you're walking in this spirit, allow God's power through the Holy Spirit to break that chain and that shackle off your mind and off your heart. And I guarantee you live a more fruitful and abundant and a free life in Christ. <clears throat> so Lord God, tonight we thank you for the Holy Spirit's leadership. We thank you, Lord God, for the word of God. I ask tonight, God, that you speak to our hearts by divine revelation. Break the chains and the shackles off our minds, the strongholds, the bondages, oh God. Allow us to recognize the spirit of whoredom that has been influenced in our lives, oh God, that will be broken and that we be set free by the blood of the Lamb. And I thank you, Lord God, that you're working in us to draw us to that place where we love you with all our hearts, our soul, and our minds, oh God, that nothing else would matter but living our lives for you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen. The spirit of whoredom, <clears throat> the spirit of whoredom is our subject tonight. The spirit, the word whoredom is a word that's defined, it's defined as <clears throat> excuse me, as prostitution or living a promiscuous sexual 
activity or lifestyle or living a promiscuous sexual lifestyle is what the word whoredom stands for and many people in the body of Christ have been bound by the spirit because they allow themselves to be victimized by the enemy now I want you to know tonight that as God gives us revelation he gives us the he gives us the tools of what to use, how to be set free from the enemy. There are many different avenues the enemy comes into our lives with the spirit of whoredom, and the spirit of whoredom comes through our eyes, our ears, our minds, our hearts. Why? Because we open ourselves up to the spirit of whoredom, either through the television, through the music we listen to, or through, <clears throat> excuse me, or we allow other people to speak into our lives, enticing words or things that would draw us to a place where we don't recognize God's voice because we're blinded by the voice of the enemy. The spirit of whoredom is a strong spirit. That spirit not only operates in the natural lifestyle where you have prostitutes on the street corners selling their bodies, but we in the body of Christ, we sell ourselves to the enemy. And the reason why we sell ourselves to the enemy is because God sometimes takes too long to do what he says he's going to do in our lives. When God promises to bless us and to give us the enriching and things pertaining to life and godliness, we get impatient. We get in a hurry. We got to have a quick way of getting what God wants to bring into our lives and make us successful. So many people find themselves running to other people to satisfy themselves. The spirit of whoredom is a spirit of prostitution where Israel, the people of the Lord, have gave themselves up to that vile spirit, that foul spirit, which drew them to a place of separation from God because God was taking too long to deliver them. God was taking too long to answer their cry, so they turned to their own way of doing things. Mark chapter 12, verse 30, it says, And thou, he's talking about you, believer, <clears throat> shall love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy mind, with all thy strength. This is the first commandment. Jesus got this from the Old Testament. And he quoted this to his people to remind them that you must love God. You must be committed. You must be submitted. You must be faithful to God with all your heart, your soul, your mind, and your strength. Everything about, in other words, your whole entire being needs to be submitted to the Lord. And committed to the Lord. And faithful to the Lord. Leviticus chapter 19 verse 29 says, Do not prostitute thy daughter to cause her to be a whore, lest the land fall to whoredom and the land become full of wickedness. God was talking about Israel. Even in the book of Leviticus, he was referring the daughter to Israel. The people of God, he said, Do not cause them to prostitute. So, so many times we mingle with people who are not serving God, who's not walking with God, and the spirit that's inside of them that's not of God gets on you and causes you to have these wicked thoughts. Also, you got these, these lustful desires. Oh, oh, and then, uh, then you're trying to figure out a way to fulfill these desires. Like I mentioned before, we can listen to the televisions, the radios, be around people, and pick up a spirit of whoredom. And that spirit is a strong spirit and that spirit will pull you to the place of bondage where you'd be imprisoned by the enemy in your mind. Hosea chapter 4 verse 12. It says like this, My people inquire of a piece of wood and their walking staff gives them oracles. What it's talking about is divination. The children of Israel will find themselves seeking after witchcraft to get an answer from God. But instead of seeking God themselves, 
they seek the demonic forces to get an answer to their problem. And it says, for a spirit of whoredom, prostitution has led them astray, and they have left their God to play the whore. We all have been victimized. We all have fallen into the place of whoredom at one point or another in our lives where we left our God. Some started you know, at an early age or pre-teens, teenage ages, you know, a young adult, adult lives. We fall into that category. Some were the victims. Some were the victors who victimized other people. And we all have done something in our lives that we need to repent for. And God says when we recognize the sin in our lives, we need to come to him in repentance because we do not forgive our brothers the trespasses or the sin they've done against you, the harm they've done to you, the pain they caused, the scars they put in your heart from hurting you. God said he would not forgive you your trespasses. It is so vital, my sister and my brother, to recognize when the enemy is working in your life with unforgiveness. Unforgiveness will take you to the grave where you would not enter the kingdom of heaven. Galatians chapter 5. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Galatians chapter 5. In verse, uh, verse 19. It says, Now... And this is in the Amplified Version. It says, Now the doings, the practices of the flesh are clear, obvious. They are immorality, impurity, indecency. Verse 20, idolatry, sorcery, enmity, strife, jealousy, anger, ill-tempered, selfishness, divination or divisions, party spirit, factions, sex, which is S-E-T, with particular opinions to your belief system and heresies. So these are the characteristics of the flesh, and these things will keep you from entering to the kingdom of heaven. So Paul makes it clear that we once were darkness, but now we are children of light. And because we're children of light, we must recognize the importance of walking in God's truth and his righteousness. The spirit of horror. This strong man's name seems to imply that only people who frequent prostitutes are influenced by the spirit of horror. But there is more to it than that. This particular condition can be a spiritual bondage as well as a physical one. You hear what I just said? This condition could be a spiritual situation in your life, as well as a physical one. God bless you all for joining me tonight. It is so vital that we recognize this spirit when it engages in our hearts. When we open up our gateway for the enemy to come in to bring this spirit into our lives, it will drive you down a pathway to darkness. And that darkness will eventually destroy your life and lead you to the grave where you will not enter to the kingdom of heaven. The book of Hosea points out such a case. My people ask for counsel of their stocks and their staff declares this unto them. For the spirit of whoredom has caused them to err. And they have gone whoring from under their God. Hosea chapter 4 verse 12, the scripture we read in the Amplified. It says, they will not frame their doings to turn unto their God. In other words, they were prevented from turning to God because of the spirit of whoredom has entered into their heart. And it says, for the spirit of whoredom is in the midst of them, and they have not known the Lord. Because of this spirit, this is Hosea chapter 5, verse 4, Hosea chapter 4, verse 12, those two key scriptures, Hosea, the, the, uh, uh, the prophet, God gave him an instruction to marry a harlot. It says, Hosea's marriage to a harlot illustrated to the nations what they were doing when they forsook God to embrace the idols and the false gods of their neighboring nation. Here's the thing here. When God saw Israel had became vile, and have turned to their affections of the flesh, away from him. 
gods and they went whoring after other gods. When God brought them out of Egypt into the wilderness, leading them to the promised land, he gave them stern instructions not to mingle with other nations or adapt to their customs or their belief systems or their heresies to turn you from your believing in your God. Because he, they knew, he knew that if they did such a thing, it would cause them to be driven to a place of exile from God. So God knew within their hearts that this darkness or this spirit would control them. And it was so important for them to get to the place of returning to their God. So according to Hosea, Hosea felt the same pain and agony on a physical level with a harlot. God told Hosea, get a harlot for his wife. And when he did, he, he was, uh, he felt the pain of it, the disgust of being with a harlot. You know, and that's the thing with God. God wants us as believers, my brothers and sisters, to get to the place where we recognize the importance of how much we need the Lord in our lives. It's so vital, so important to recognize, hey, there's a spirit that came into my heart. I need to get this thing out of me. I need to break free from it, from the stronghold of it. I got to separate myself from certain people. If you know people in your life are not walking with God and they're leading you down a pathway of destruction, you have to break free from that. Although we may not actually offer sacrifice to physical idols, whatever comes between us and our relationship to God is still an idol and thus a form of spiritual adultery. Although sex may not be involved, spiritual adultery, we commit spiritual adultery every time we allow ourselves to turn from God to love something more than God. We can love our wives. We can love our mates. We can love our children. We can love our jobs. We can love our materialistic things more than God. And God calls those idols. Whatever rule is our God, whatever rules us is our God, be it food, sex, diversion, sports, money, power, the pursuit of a career, video games, television, a possession, our children, religion, or any other cause. Whatever it is we put first in our lives above God becomes our God. That's spiritual adultery. Television. Let's take television as an example. We should be in a church on Sunday evening to hear the word of God, but the best movies usually run at the same time. What comes first? Which is the most important in your life? Most of us would deny that television is our God because a television junkie is considered to be intellectually, intellectually inferior, inferior. Intellectually inferior. But we have not noted, but we have noted in our services all over the United States that Sunday nights, congregations are usually only half the size of the Sunday morning crowd. Most people find Sunday evening services interfering with what they want to watch on television. And I used to do that myself, have a Sunday evening service to attend, but my favorite program was coming on. I'd rather stay home and watch my favorite program than go to church, which is nothing wrong with that all the time, but if this becomes your habit, your addiction, then it becomes a sin. Now the problem on Sunday nights may not be television. It could be sports, hunting, fishing, boating, skiing, or the whole bundle of other things. The point is that God has been shifted down the list of priorities until other things have dominated the place in our lives. We allow other things to take the dominant place in our lives and put God at the bottom of our list. Whatever it is that you allow to take priority in your life is the very thing that will separate you from God. Paul made this observation, all things are lawful to me, but, not, but all things are not expedient. All things are lawful for me, but I will not be brought under the power of any. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 12, and what he's saying that all things in the world are lawful or, or, or things we can do are acceptable, but they're not profitable in our lives. Then he says, 
all things are lawful for me. In other words, I can do anything I set my heart to do, but I would not be brought under subjection to any of those things that's going to turn me from my God. And that's the thing we must recognize. Whatever it is we allow to pull us from our God, from our, our allegiance or our devotion to our God, it becomes a sin in our lives. It becomes a problem in our lives. It becomes a destructive me mechanism the enemy uses in your life to destroy you. Television, sports, food, video games, etc. are not evil in themselves. The only, they only become a problem when they control or dominate our lives. They must be made to take their rightful place down the list. God is to be first, our family and second, and so on and so on. So the category that we should have as our list of everyday activities, God first, our family second, our church and anything else follow after that. Because God takes priority or first place in our lives. The scripture says in 1 John chapter 2, verse 15 to 17, Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that's in the world is the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. It is not of the Father, but it is of the world. And the world passes away, and the lust thereof. So, God makes it clear, according to his word, his standpoint, we are not to love the world, its devices, its treasures, its delicacies. We should not allow these things to take priority in our lives. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. Why? Because if I give myself a little leaven, you know how about baking a cake. You take the flour, you take the baking powder to make it rise, if it's not self-rising flour, and it will rise. When you put all the ingredients together, the cake going to rise. A little leaven can level the whole lump. So if you don't put the right amount of stuff in the cake, the cake going to fall. As a matter of fact, it won't even rise. That's how sin is in our hearts. You take a little bit of sin from loving the things of the world, and it begins to dominate control your entire life until everything about you pass away. The sin becomes present, president in your life. God becomes secondary. The world becomes priority. God has no priority in your life. God, God does not want us to be spiritually spiritual alley cats. Chasing whatever pleasure happens to be the fa latest fad in the world. God does not want us to be spiritual alley cats. Chasing whatever is going on in the world. Or the latest garments. Or the latest treasure. The latest this. Or the latest that. It's detriment to our spiritual relationship with God. Anything that c captivates our attention and lures us from our devotion or our allegiance to God. It can become devastating or detriment to your spiritual life, <clears throat> to where it destroys you. But I thank God for his grace and mercy. He wants us to be redeeming the time because the days are evil. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 16. We must learn how to manage our time in the right order, in the right way we need to live according to the time God has given us. I remember I was in a class of not long ago, and, the, and the, uh, the commentator asked the question, how are you managing your time? And my response was putting God first, living my life according to the way God wants me to live, that I can be peaceful and have a fruitful and a glorious day. Why? Because when I yield myself, to God and do not give in to any other spirit that's not of God. God controls my life and his spirit empowers me and strengthens me. So we're going to continue this uh, on next week. But some of the subjects we're going to talk about with the spirit of whoredom is unfaithfulness, adultery, 
chronic dissatisfaction, love of money, idolatry, fornication, spirit, soul, and body prostitution, excessive appetite, which is overeating, worldliness. These are the subjects or the characteristics of the spirit of hoarder. And with these characteristics, they are the roots of the flesh that are, if they're planted in your heart, need to be uprooted, plucked up, and destroyed and burned in the fire of God's spirit. And if you don't allow God to purge these things out of you, these things will dominate and control your entire life. So I thank you for tuning in tonight. I do apologize for not having the having the lesson started on time at six. I was on at six, but as I stated before, I was testing my system earlier and forgot to change the setting in Facebook back to the uh, public and had it on only me. And I tell you, I was gone too. I was gone. I was teaching this word. And then by the time I got halfway through, I, I didn't realize, I realized like, I didn't see nobody come on. I said, oh my God, I forgot to change the setting. I know usually each week, at least one person comes on. So I knew right then and there, that was an indication that something wasn't right with the setting. So I had to close it out and go back into it again and start all over again. But that's okay because the devil still is a liar. Jesus Christ still Lord. He still gets the victory. God gets the glory. We're still blessed and highly favored of God. And I pray these teachings are enriching to you as well as it is to me to help enlighten you and to change your thinking. Because many times the enemy imprisons us through our thought life and he tries to destroy us and keep us in bondage. But remember this, God do not want you to be chasing after anything of this world that's going to take the place of God in your life. It can be a person. It can be a place. It can be a thing. Doesn't matter what it is that the enemy brings your way. If it takes priority in your life above God, you need to run away from it. The Bible says be, be swift to run from evil. We have to turn away from evil. We got to turn to God's truth. Allow the Spirit of God to draw us in to that place of enrichment, of God's glory. Because I tell you, his word will set you free. Deuteronomy chapter 23, verse 18. Deuteronomy chapter 23, verse 18. Thou shalt not bring the hire of a whore or the price of a dog into the house of the Lord thy God for any vow. For even both these are abomination unto the Lord. God says, you cannot bring the money that you receive from a whore, that you pay, pay for a whore, and you want to bring it to the house of God to give it a vow. God said, nope, you're not going to accept it. But I want you to know this. That God is faithful to his word. God's word will validate itself. God will deliver you. God will set you free. God will break the chains off your mind and your heart. Only if you allow him to do it. In the English Standard Version, it says it like this. It says, you shall not bring the fee of a prostitute or the wages of of a dog into the house of the Lord your God in your payments for any vow. So you gotta understand back during the biblical law, the Levitical law, when they had to offer sacrifice to God, they had to bring payments to God, which is the first from all the increase. And God says, if you in this this category of the spirit, he only want the money from that. He don't want you trying to pay him anything. If it's unclean. Because God is the God of holiness and righteousness. He don't want us giving him anything that's dirty. Or impure. But everything we offer to God. Must be given. By the cleansing power of the Holy Spirit. A free will offering to the Lord. And God will receive it. 
and he will deliver you. He will set you free. He will cover you. He will strengthen you. He'll provide for you. He'll meet your every need. So in our lesson, I'm trying to quit, but I don't feel like quitting. It says, let's go to the next subject. The next subject is adultery and fornication. Adultery and fornication. On the other side of the coin, we must be aware that physical adultery and fornication are also the playground of the strong man. Physical adultery and fornication are the playground of the strong man, the spirit of whoredom. That's what it's talking about. Now the body is not for fornication, but for the Lord. And the Lord for the body. Know ye not that your bodies are the members of Christ? Shall I then take the members of Christ and make them the members of an harlot? God, hallelujah, glory to God. God forbid, flee fornication, and every sin that a man doeth is without the body. But he that committed fornication sins against his own body. What know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which ye have of God, and ye are not your own, for ye are bought with the price. Therefore glorify God in your body and, your, and in your spirit, which are God's. Your body belongs to God, and that's what the word is talking about. You belong to God, and because you belong to God, you, you have to give yourself to the Lord. No matter what's going on in your life, who brings what to you, who tries to entice and stop you, you have to recognize that spirit of God is, is working in your life to change you, to perfect you, to, to empower you, to, to encourage you. To, to, you know, I mean, God, God is doing so much in our lives. He's doing so much, but the enemy wants to distract us. And any time he can distract you, he can stop you. But the devil is a lie. God promises his word would not return to him void. When God speaks a word into your life, no, doesn't matter what spirit has inhabited you, God's power is greater than that spirit to deliver you. So God makes it clear that we are the temple of the Holy Spirit. Because we're temple of the Holy Spirit, we're not to use our body for prostitution, for fornication, or for adultery. Our bodies are to be submitted and committed to the Lord at all times as we trust and depend on his word. God bought us with the blood of Jesus when he offered his son as a sacrifice for us on the cross. And because he paid that price, you don't belong to yourself. You belong to the Lord. And because you belong to the Lord, you have to give yourself to God on a daily basis. Even though extramarital relationships have become the norm in our society, we must understand that God's word still stands the same. Sexual union outside the marriage bond brings bondage and confusion in our lives that chokes out the desire that God please to please God in our hearts. Extramarital relationships. The enemy, the spirit, the stronghold, the bondage. It comes into your heart to destroy everything God has done in your life. God brought you this far by faith because he brought you this far by faith. The devil is a liar. Jesus Christ is Lord. And if you recognize that he's Lord of your life, it doesn't matter what's going on. You can break free from any spirit. We live by faith. The Bible tells us the just should live by faith. And this, it says, in, the, in this day of fluctuating interest rates and worldwide inflation, God's word recommends that the just shall live by faith. Romans chapter 1, verse 17. The just shall live by faith. We have to remember, without faith, it is impossible 
to please God. Without faith, it is impossible to live a satisfying life devoted to God. That's what it's talking about. The spirit of whoredom is an assassination spirit that comes to destroy your desire and your purpose and the plan and the will of God for your life. We brought nothing to this world and it's certain we can carry nothing out. Having food and raiment, let us be there with content. But they that will to be rich fall into temptation and a snare and into many foolish and lust, hurtful lusts which drown men in their destruction and perdition. For the love of money is the root of all evil, which while some coveted after they have erred from the faith and pierced themselves through, through with many sorrows. But thou, O man of God, flee these things and follow after righteousness, goodness, faith, love, patience, and meekness. Fight the good fight of faith. Fight the good fight of faith. Lay hold on to eternal meekness or eternal life. Wherewith unto thou art called and hast professed a good profession before many witnesses. That's, that is 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 7 through 12. God bless you, everyone. 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 7 through 12. Is letting you know that we brought nothing to this world and we're not going to take anything with us when we die. So the love of money, the desires of the flesh, the love of the flesh, we need to learn how to allow the Holy Spirit to purge those things out of us. And as we allow him to cleanse us and to sanctify us by the truth of God's word, we can live a godly, righteous, a faithful, a loving life, a patient life, full of meekness and gentleness, the fruit of the Spirit can be demonstrated through our lives as we learn how to fight the good fight of faith. And good fight of faith, you always come out a winner. Our most prized possession in this life is our profession of faith. Our most prized possession in this life is our profession of faith. But it can become buried in our drive to pile up money. So if you if you're seeking out the money, you're trying to do everything you can to get more money, work three and four jobs to get more money, you're turning away from God to money. And the love of money is a root of evil. Is a root of evil. So in other words, it's a pathway down your destruction. Jesus said that God clothed the lilies of the field. Lilies have never get up tight, worrying about what color they, they should be or when to operate, open their petals. God cares for them. How much more will he care for us? So just relax. If we want to drive ourselves in search of something, why not go for righteousness, godliness, faith, loving, patience, and meekness as Paul suggested above. If we want a good fight, why not fight the good fight of faith? If you fight the good fight of faith, I guarantee you'll find yourself being satisfied, at peace, comforted, empowered, covered, provided for. Everything you need is engrafted in God's covenant. For God has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in the heavenly places. Everything you need God says, if I take care of the lilies of the field, they ain't worried about the colors they are. They ain't worried about opening up their petals when they need to open. If God knows how to take care of the natural things of the world, the birds of the air, the fish of the seas, everything around us, if he can take care of that, how much greater is he going to take care of you? Think about it. If God takes care of everything around you and he lives inside of you, he guarantees he will take care of everything that's concerning you. Your finances, your health, your well-being, your prosperity, your peace of mind, your sound heart. 
Everything about you, God promised to take care of. So fight the good fight of faith. And the good fight of faith, you're going to come out on top every time. Because God promised I'll never leave you, nor forsake you, nor abandon you. So we're going to stop at this point talking about uh, adultery and fornication. We're going to stop at this point and we'll pick up on next week. We're going to continue with some of the characteristics of the spirit of whoredom. We're going to continue to let God speak to our heart. I don't know about you, but I'm loving this lesson because it's showing me myself. Every lesson that I've been teaching for the last six, seven months has been an eye-opening for myself. And sometimes, if you don't take the time out to do a personal examination, you miss it. When God is trying to change you, trying to convict you, trying to wash you clean, trying to purify you, trying to perfect you, you're going to miss it because you're blinded by these spirits. And these spirits are strongholds of the enemy with a purpose to kill, steal, and destroy. The enemy don't want you to be successful. The enemy doesn't want you to be prosperous. The enemy doesn't want you to be healthy. He wants you to be broken, torn apart, stripped up, messed up, psychologically, physically. Everything about you is being just torn apart. But God promises that I have come to give you life and that more abundantly. If God promised life more abundantly, I guarantee everything that God promises, he will do through his word in your life. And all you got to do is just receive it by faith. Recognize where you are, what you're doing, who you are, and stop it. You may say to yourself, but I don't know how to stop. I, I, I've been dealing with the same problem for so long. It's a lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life, the, the adultery, the fornication, the harlotry, the whoring after other lovers, all these different things. And I don't know how to be free. The answer to your problem is this. Acknowledge it. Recognize it. Repent of it. Ask God to forgive you for your sin of unrighteousness to come into your heart and cleanse you. And then come into your heart, restore you, revive you, and make you new and be your Lord and Savior. You might be born again already. He'll restore you. He'll refresh you. He'll change you. He'll bring you back to the place of your first love where nothing in this world would matter but living a free and a fruitful life for the Lord. So if you don't know the Lord and Savior tonight as your Lord and Savior, if you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, my words getting twisted up, forgive me. But I want you to pray this prayer with me. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, I acknowledge that I'm a sinner and I need the Savior to come into my heart. Forgive me for my sins, knowingly, unknowingly, willfully, and unwillfully, the things I've done to wash me clean by the blood of the Lamb. And now come into my heart and be my Lord and Savior. And I thank you for saving me and forgiving me and giving me another chance in Jesus' name. Now come into my heart, fill me with the Holy Spirit, and that with power to be a witness for you to tell others about the goodness of the Lord. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. If you pray that prayer tonight, the whole host of heaven is rejoicing over one sinner that's giving their lives to the Lord. Amen. And if you are a backslider, one who walked with the Lord, and you know you walked away from the Lord, I want you to pray this prayer with me tonight. Heavenly Father, I come to you in the name of Jesus. I acknowledge you that I have backslid from the Lord. And I'm asking you to come into my heart and restore me. Forgive me, cleanse me, renew me, refresh me, and change me that I can live my life from this day forward for you. In Jesus' name. Now, Holy Spirit, fill me with your power that I will be a witness for you. In Jesus' name I pray. 
Amen. If you prayed that prayer, any one of those prayers, God loves you. I love you, and I thank you for your obedience because one of these days, we are all going to leave this earth to see the Lord. And I'd rather you join me with a guarantee to see the Lord than to know your destiny is going to be in the lake of fire for eternity. I thank you for tuning in tonight. I pray that something has been said or done that would encourage you, that would even challenge you to get into the word of God. Look up those scriptures I mentioned tonight. That, the, that you allow God to minister to your heart from his word. Because I guarantee he's going to speak to you in a way you need to hear him. But have your ears open, your voice attentive to his, to his word, to the voice of the Holy Spirit, to hear and receive the word of God. And I guarantee the word will empower you. The word will change you. The word will convict you. The word will refresh you. The word will strengthen you. The word will put you back on the right track. Amen. So, Lord God, I thank you tonight for this word. I pray that something has been said or done. It will continually change our lives, oh God, to live a more fruitful and abundant life for the kingdom of God. Let thy will be done. Let thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Come into our heart, Lord God, tonight. Change our thinking, change our attitude, change our perspective. Allow us to see what you see, hear what you hear. That we guard our ear gates from hearing the things of the world, but we hear your voice. And then, Lord God, allow our hearts to receive this word with meekness. That it would, Father, rest in our hearts and settle. That we would chew on this word, meditate on this word. That we live a better life from this day forward. Pleasing in your sight. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. I thank you for tuning in tonight. Those scriptures again, we go back to it, was Hosea chapter 4, verse 12, Hosea chapter 5, verse 4, 14, and I guarantee when you read these words tonight, it's going to remind you of who you are in God, 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 12, it's another one. Deuteronomy chapter 23, verse 18. Hallelujah. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. All right, let's read a cracker. Oh, Hosea chapter 4, verse, I mean, chapter 5, verse 4. Correction. Hosea chapter 5, verse 4. And then 1 John chapter 2. Verse 15 through 17. First John chapter 2, verse 15 through 17. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 16. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 16. So if you're taking notes, these are some of the scriptures. And then another one, 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 13, verse 15, verse 18 through 20. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 13. Verse 15, verse 18 through 20. And then Romans chapter 1, verse 17. It's another scripture we discussed tonight. And then 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 7 through 12. These are the scriptures we discussed tonight so far. Stay in the word. I say it all the time. When you get in the word, the word will get in you. Do anyone have any questions tonight or any comments before I go? I thank you all for joining me, uh, Victor and Julie and Brandon. God bless you all. Anthony, LaShonda, Aunt Marilyn, God bless you. Pastor John, God bless you, sir. We are just closing up our lesson for tonight, the spirit of whoredom. And um, you can go back and listen to the uh, video to see what we discussed about and I pray that it be a blessing to you. And we will continue on next week with some of these attributes again with the spirit of whoredom. And the next subject is going to be gluttony, which is a characteristic of the spirit of whoredom. Gluttony. That's another subject we're going to talk about. So share with the, this video with other people, friends and family, whoever got an impression in your heart to share it with. 
and stay excited about Jesus and know that he loves you and so do I. Shalom, the peace of God rest upon you. Have a good night.